This is my uh, first tutorial on SOLIDWORKS. I'm gonna show you how you can simply draw a part uh, to be 3D printed. And then you can use the basic SOLIDWORKS simulation to estimate the mechanical performance of the part in the application you intend to do. So obviously I'm gonna just draw the simplest possible geometry, uh, assuming it's simply a beam with a relatively uh, large base that will be probably screwed to a wall and you intend to attach something to that beam, maybe just hang your coat. So this is a, obviously a simplified uh, design. And the main difference between any manufactured part, generally speaking manufacturing, uh, relative to additive manufacturing is that in additive you generally have a porous uh, interior of the part, so it is porous and that porosity usually reduces in the strengths and in the uh, and make it causes some stress concentrations and that's why it would be always good to simulate and to add rounding some fillet or curvatures in the areas where you expect uh, to have a stress concentration and a simulation of stresses is always a good start to get an idea where possible failures would occur and where you need to reinforce the structure of the part. So now I just created this very simple, very simplified design, uh, assuming you will have screws in this area where you will fix this part here and here. Of course, I'm not doing this to extreme accuracy, but relative accuracy uh, just as a demo design. But while I'm doing this, maybe if you're even not familiar with SOLIDWORKS, I'm just showing you quickly how that I model this. You can always slow down the video and rewatch the steps. So this is the part. Now I go to the simulation and it is in the evaluate tab here. And I go to the express simulation. So this is on the go, quick setup. Uh, what I need to do is um, there are options, but this is to change units. And this is where the files will be saved. I don't need to usually change those unless I need the files later or I'm not using millimeters, rather I'm using inch. You can always go to option and switch here to the English, but I'm always using millimeter, which is the international unit. So we go to next and the first question is to add a fixture. So this is a part that will be fixed from the back. So you add a fixture. To be a bit more accurate, maybe you could just fix the areas where you have the screws and leave the rest loose. And you see here, I selected those two surfaces. So if I hover, it will show me where it will fix. And if I move away, it will show me where I already selected. So these are already fixed locations. I don't need to edit anything. So I don't need to add or edit what I have. I'll just move forward. I'll go now to adding a force. So I'll add a force. In this case, I will choose a force at the tip. Uh, of course, not in this direction. Um, preferably, it should be going downward. So then I'll select the direction. And for direction, it needs a, generally a plane. So I can choose this plane for direction, which is not the right one, or this plane. So and this is the proper perpendicular plane. Uh, of course, I need to switch the direction to downward instead of upward. And to do that, uh, you can just click here, reserve, reverse. Now it's downward. And we'll increase the stress value to 100. Keep in mind, this is a beam that's 100% uh, full. So there's no cavitation in it. So one last step before I move forward, I will just save this. Uh, now it doesn't matter in a random location. And I'll go back to feature and I'll go to shell and I will convert this to a 1.6 millimeter shell. That will convert the entire part to a shell. Let's see if this works. Apply. So you don't notice any changes, but now if I do a cut, you see this is already a thin body so now i converted this to a shell more similar closer to the reality of what how this will be printed and of course inside you might have a, an infill 
but the infill has minimum effect especially if you want to print this quick and lightweight you will have 10 percent infill so now we're back to the wizard nothing changed in the wizard it's still waiting for me to move forward but what has changed is the inside of the pot so now i don't know why it's switching like that let's try to do this again it wouldn't allow me one last try let's see okay you can see this is a porous part now I'll move next and this is a uh, i already added the fixture i already added the force now the bit of a tricky part is choosing the material solidworks only has a, a specific list of potential materials of course by additive maybe you're printing this in abs so you select abs i think pla which is another very common polymer is not in the list so it's either pla which you, is not here or polylactic acid so which is also not here unfortunately that is not in the list so we go for abs now no need to change the material i've selected it's confirmed abs then i go next and i just need to run the simulation this generally doesn't make too much time we already get the, almost the result and is this something you'd expect definitely you see the bending here and this animation is usually fast so if i click yes continue it stops and then i can show the stresses so this was probably the fastest simulation i've ever done and you can see a relatively large deflection you can see stresses here in the corners so this is where you shouldn't have sharp corners but rather rounded and this is the high stress near where the screws will be so and you see this plate is totally twisted here that's why it would be useful to have here additional ribs along the lengths to reduce this twist uh, because this twist will cause a lot of bending at the tip and this was a very quick way to do an estimation and a quick simulation on SOLIDWORKS instead of stresses and you can see these values of stresses uh, they're very high so ABS fails at near 50 megapascal so around almost turning to green so everything green here has already failed this beam will not be able to carry 100 newtons 10 kilos of weight because it had a lot of porosity in and if you print this going upward you know you'll have layers and these layers will delaminate and detach so this is totally a failed design if the load is going to be 100 and there will be a lot of work to do and definitely in this case will be better if you have the layers in this orientation so we don't have separation stresses but shear stresses and if you print this in this direction you need a lot of support here because of this area so it would be nice or it would be useful to try to move this geometry down to the bottom so it's, it lays on the print bed and then you add this two screws above it that will actually work better you can also switch to view and displacement and these values are a bit scientific values but this is to the power one that means this is eight uh, millimeters of displacement uh, i can perfectly rotate this to see a proper side view so this is 8 times 10 that means this is 80 millimeter of displacement which is also large and that's it thank you for watching if you have any question please write them down in the comments